Warwickshire were made to work very hard for their win over Middlesex, but they eventually got over the line, taking the game by five wickets to move away from the relegation places in the LV County Championship. Middlesex were battling hard to avoid defeat at the start of the final day in Uxbridge. Following on, they resumed on 147 for five, still trailing by 30, but they did still have their first inning centurion Adam Voges at the crease with the night watchman Toby Rowland-Jones, and they were able to add 40 runs in the opening 40 minutes to at least get their side ahead. Jitan Patel, getting through a lot of overs in this match, got the much-needed breakthrough when he had Roland Jones caught off a combination of bat and pad by Varun Chopra with a total on 187 for six. New man Gareth Berg lived a little dangerously when he came in to join Voges. But he also found a boundary on a couple of occasions as he and his partner carried their side 24 runs further ahead. So the lead stood at 34 when Middlesex lost their seventh man, Berg on 12, edging a quicker ball from Patel behind. So now it was all down to Voges, who'd made 150 first time out. He added another half century to that with this shot, getting there off 88 deliveries, this being just his fourth boundary. In spite of his tremendous efforts, he knew that he still had to add to the seven and a half hours he'd been batting for in this match overall. Alas for him and his team, that was not to be the case as he was out before he'd added another run. It took a very good catch on his follow-through from the bowler Chris Wokes to get shot of him as he went with his side effectively on 60 for 8. Ollie Rayner was then dropped as he tried to pull Wokes, the batsman then falling to the ground in instalments, which would have amused some. Perhaps not Rayner, who then top-edged to sweep off Patel to be watchfully held by a back-tracking Ricky Clark. Now nine down, it seemed only a matter of time before Warwick's were back in, chasing a small target for just their second win of the summer. But for the second day in succession, Ravi Patel held them up, proving that he knows one end of his bat from the other. Over eight overs, he added 33 runs with Corey Collimore, taking the total to 286. Patel was out for 19 in a bit of extra time before lunch, nicking Wokes behind, and that gave the visitors two sessions to get 110 runs for their victory. Neil Dexter threw the ball to off-spinner Rayner to open up, and for a moment that looked inspired. Chopra was finally dismissed in this match as he turned Rayner's fourth ball to mid-wicket. And then, with his ninth delivery, the former Sussex man struck again by having Laurie Evans caught by Dexter at mid-on. That put the Bears on 5 for 2, and with Collymore also producing peaches such as this delivery, the result of this game was by no means a foregone conclusion. Especially when Collymore found the edge of Ian Westwood's bat to have him well held by Voges, a dismissal which left Warwickshire on 21 for 3. Since claiming the title last year, they've not really been too used to winning cricket matches, and so there were probably a few nerves in their dressing room as Tim Ambrose and Atik Javid tried to get their side as close as they could. Each boundary would have settled any nerves down. In 14 overs, both batsmen kept their heads in adding 33 for the fourth wicket. But the game was not settled when Berg found some away movement to have Javid caught behind for 19. At 54 for 4, 66 runs were still needed. Another wicket now and this game would have been extremely interesting. But Ambrose kept going grittily, going about his business, grabbing his runs from wherever he could get them. Not many could have predicted the importance of his knock after his side had been so heavily on top for so long in this contest. Ambrose needed support, of course, and he got that from Wokes, who made sure that Rayner was to have no more success with the ball. This pair took the total to 98, and so only 12 were required when Ambrose on 47 was given out at bat pad, where Sam Robson held on very well. Ambrose had made the end game a much easier one than it may have been. Clark then made no mistake in taking the match to its conclusion. He drove Darwin Milan through the covers for the final boundary his side needed. Credit had to be given to both teams, Warwickshire for finding the kind of form they produced over and over again last summer, and Middlesex for fighting really hard and making such a contest of this one in the end. Still, they had to settle for only four points, which leaves them in fourth place in the table, and now 39 points behind the new leaders, Sussex. 
Warwick had began this match in the bottom two, but the 22 points they accrued took them above both Surrey and Somerset, and they are now 16 points clear of the relegation places.